this is just shifted. Somebody shout shift. Somebody shout shift. If you're right here, I want you to stay there because we're, we're going to, at about 7.30, we're going to enter back into a time of prayer. The Holy Spirit began to deal with me all year. All year. 2024. He came to me sharp on the first day of the year. He said, son, you need to enter back into your prayer time. And I'm not talking about the waking up in the morning and the thank you, Lord, for waking me up and the Oh, yeah, but I, uh, praise the Lord. The Lord says you need to enter back into your appointed time of prayer. Somebody shot prayer. Do you know the days? If I were to share with you some of the things the Lord showed me, the days that we are coming into, you cannot survive without prayer. Let me go over here. The days that we're coming into, you will not survive them without prayer. S somebody shot, wake up. I thought 2020 would have been enough to wake the church up but the Lord says finally in 2024 I have found a people that is hungry enough to seek my face like never before and the Lord told me January 1st he says son you have to wake up somebody shall wake up if you're here you can stay here the Lord shifted my message. It was called the mystery of open heavens, but I'm going to give you something called the ascended ones. Somebody shout the ascended ones. God is literally lifting us where, right where we are. I'm going to give you a couple of things I want you to think about. And then we're going to pray some more. Somebody shout pray. Come on, say that with some more power. Somebody shall pray. The Bible says men ought to pray without ceasing. Not preach, not prophesy, but pray. Because it's in a place of prayer that God gives revelation to men for the purpose of their next. I'm going to teach. I won't preach. Is that okay? I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach. Do y'all feel that anointing in the room? Do y'all feel that, that anointing in the room? In 2000, I'm not going to give you the year because I'm not, uh, it was around 2017. I remember, I remember I was, uh, I was on the basketball team and I, um, this particular year, I was the leading scorer on my college basketball team. But uh, although I was on the basketball team, I wasn't living a life that looked like the life of a saved individual. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, this was back when I was playing basketball. He said, I'm going to allow you to play basketball the next year. However, the requirement for you is return back to prayer. For the first couple of weeks during the season of the following year, I prayed. I was actually praying before basketball games with the rest of my teammates. The coach knew that I was a man of prayer. I was young, made a lot of mistakes, but I was still a man of prayer. And I grabbed my teammates before every game and I prayed with them. But somewhere along that year, I lost my posture again. Some of you in this room right now, you lost your posture of prayer. And tonight, somebody shout tonight. I didn't hear you. Somebody shout tonight. God is going to re or give you a fresh wind concerning your prayer life. Hear me. I, I stopped praying and very quickly I lost my spot on the starting lineup. And then... When I thought that was it, I lost my rotation spot. In other words, what that means is I stopped playing. I went from the leading score the first year to not playing at all. And I remember, <laughs> I remember one game, one specific game. I got so fed up with my coach. I got so fed up with my coach that I went over to the scorer's table and I tagged myself into the game. <laughs> I walked over to the scoring table. I told his name was Marquise. I said, Marquise, come on, let's go. 
My coach looked at me and said, what is he doing? And I said, I'm putting myself in the game, coach. <laughs> About two minutes later, he dragged my behind off, uh, out of the game and put me back on the bench. The point of me sharing this with you is because there was a point during the game or the point during that season where I got injured. And I went to a small church in a little city called Springfield, Massachusetts. And there was a preacher that was going to be there that I used to admire for a very long time. And uh, Pastor Tay, I would not have went to that meeting if I wasn't injured. But the Lord said to me, he says, you're injured, you can't play anyways, so why don't you go to this church meeting, and why don't you sit at the back and see what the Lord may say to you? I went to this meeting, and I was frustrated as I sat in the back of that service. And hear me, I got up. And I began to walk out of the back. And something told me to turn around and just take a look at what the preacher is doing. And as Walter standing back there, when I turned around, he pointed at me. He said, you, come. And he stood me right here on the platform. And if I was not discerning concerning what the word of the Lord was, about going to that service, here's my point. I would have missed my moment. I would have missed the open heaven that was lingering around that building. I don't see, some of y'all won't shout when I say this, but another half of you might. If you haven't discerned for the last two weeks as a church, we have been underneath an open heaven. I don't, I don't, I didn't hear anything. Let me go over here. For the last two weeks, ATL Hub has been underneath an open heaven. And if you don't discern the moment, you're going to miss out on the benefits. You're going to miss out on the provision. You're going to miss out on the advantages because underneath an open heaven, you get benefits. I tell about somebody shout benefits. Lift your hands and say, Lord, Lift your hands and say, Lord, give me my benefits. Give me my advantage. Give me my provisions. Somebody shout, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, do not miss the moment. Reminds me, reminds me, reminds me of Luke chapter 10, men of God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, I've got 10 minutes and then we're going to pray. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, Brian, that Jesus shows up to Martha and Mary's house. Now, wherever Jesus is, there is an open heaven. Let me say that again. Wherever Jesus shows up, heaven shows up with him. I'll say it over here. Wherever Jesus shows up... There is an open heaven that follows him. How do I know that? Because I love this. Y'all got your Bibles open. This is good. And you're taking notes. Wow. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3 that Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist. And then the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came and set upon him uh, as a dove. And the, the Bible says the heavens opened. When the heavens open, the Bible says that the Father, he shouted out of the clouds. He says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God was only pleased with his Son because he was okay hiding. He was ready since he was 12. But he had to spend some more time being developed. But when the appointed time meets you, it comes with an open heaven. The reason why you may not be experiencing the provisions that you're asking God for is because it's not time yet. But I heard the Lord say as I prayed over there that I'm releasing the benefits that belong to my people. The Lord says I'm releasing the provision and I'm releasing the advantages. Why did I say that? I'm still in Luke chapter 10. Now, I said all that because Jesus showed up to this house, and when he showed up, open heavens came with him. Somebody shout, open heavens. The Bible says that Mary sat at his feet. Uh, she was postured correctly at the feet of Jesus. 
But then the Bible says that Martha was in the kitchen and Martha was cooking and frying some chicken and, and baking stew. And uh, I'm not sure what else she was making, but probably baking mac and cheese or something like that. But listen, the Bible says Martha got frustrated with her sister. And the Bible says that Martha went over to Mary and said, she said to Jesus, Lord, I'm over here cooking all this food. Are you not going to rebuke my sister? Are you not going to rebuke my sister for watching me serve? And Jesus said to her, I thank God that it's right here on the screen, says, says there is need of only one but a few things, Mary. Mary has chosen the good portion. Somebody say the good portion. Which shall not be taken away from her. Hear me. Mary discerned that an open heaven was present. So what she did was she postured herself correctly. But Martha was busy serving while an open heaven was present. Hear me and hear me so clearly. I want you to hear me. I'm really breaking things down tonight for a few moments. There's a realm that we can get to. There's a space that we can get to with God where all we have to do is sit at his feet. Bring Luke chapter, chapter 10 back up for me quickly. See, when you serve, there are things that can be taken from you if you're serving out of the wrong motive. Watch this. But when you are sitting at the feet of Jesus, it says, it shall not be taken away from her. Some of y'all caught this. In other words, when you receive the impartation that comes from an open heaven, there are things that cannot be taken away from you. In other words, I received my healing underneath an open heaven, which means the devil can't take it from me. When you discern the moments correctly, you receive the benefits of that moment. Go with me quickly to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to look at verse 26 for a second. If you're taking notes for the note takers, I want you to write this down. When you're walking underneath an open heaven, God gives you full access to the advantages of and the benefits of heaven. What that means is businessman, businesswoman, hear me with a heart of humility. There is nothing about you that stands out compared to the next business. Let me talk about myself. There are other people who look better than me. I don't look that good. There's other people that got more money than me. I don't have that much money. There are people who are more qualified for the seats that God's going to have me sit in. But when you're walking underneath an open heaven, the stakeholders are going to look at you and say, there's just something about this woman. I'm going to give her the deal. I'm going to sell her the house. I'm going to give her the job. It's not because I'm more qualified, but it's because I'm walking with the backing of heaven. Somebody shout, I got backing. Somebody shout, I got backing. Somebody shout, I got backing. With where we're heading to in 2024, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. With what is to come, God is not looking for gifted. Jesus, should I go here? God is not looking for the gifted. I wasn't preaching this, I promise. God is looking for those who are postured at his feet. He's looking for those with history with God. Are you going to sit and are you going to pray? Are you going to put your head between your legs like Elijah and intercede on behalf of your family? Intercede on behalf of your church. Somebody shall pray. Oh, I like that one. Say that again. Say pray. I said that with power. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hmm. 
who's looking to buy a house this year? Stand up quickly. I'm just being obedient. Father, I release it upon them now. Hear the prophetic word. The Lord says, you will have it if you pray. The Lord says, you will have what you pray for. Let me say this again. The Lord says, you will have what you pray for. But it's birthed in the time of prayer. It's birthed in the time of seeking. It's birthed in the time of intimacy. It's birthed in the time of travailing before the Lord. The homeowners are going to look at you and they're not going to know why they chose to sell you the house because there are other people who have more money for the down payment. But Garrett, God says, because you're standing underneath an open heaven, I'm going to give it to you. Pante Kuramanta, lift your hands. I hear this. The Lord says you can even look for a five bedroom house for this year's the year. The Spirit of the Lord says, I'll give it to you. Come, come, come here. Quickly, quickly. Come on, somebody pray. Pray. If you want the house, pray. Father, I release it upon him now. The Lord says, You're coming into a season of great priesthood. For the Lord says, Oh, Rabasa. The Lord gave you a specific time to begin praying. And the Lord says, Do not uh, miss the hour of visitation. For I see angels visiting you. Uh, there's a specific hour during the day. The Lord says, man of God, if you don't miss this moment, I will give you the desires of your heart. I release it upon in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, it's mine. I don't hear you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor this year, it's mine. Now shout like you believe it. Come on, open up. I said, you're taking notes, write this second point down. I, I needed to give you this before we pray. The second one is, when you're walking underneath an open heaven, you are walking under the full backing of heaven's government. Let me say that again. When you are walking underneath an open heaven, you are walking underneath the government of heaven. The government. Somebody say the government. Let me give you an analogy here. I want you to picture, Pastor Derek, are you here? Where are you? I'm just using you as an analogy. Can I use you? It's like Derek, Pastor Derek, going into Atlanta. Are you hearing me? Are you listening? I want you to catch this by the Spirit because when you leave here tonight, I'm telling you, there are things that are opening up for you by the Spirit. Are you hearing me? It's like Pastor Derek going into Atlanta. Who, anybody here know who Young Thug is? Y'all know who Young Thug? Who say yeah? Oh, that's the youth. Of course. Lord have mercy. Of course, where's Nisa? We're going to have to work. I'm joking. She's part of the youth department. It's like Derek going into Atlanta, and there's a shootout between the police and a gang. Hear me. And Derek shows up, and you know Derek is deep. He got some deep tongues, y'all. You ever hear Derek's tongues? I mean, it's deep, y'all. When he speaks in tongues, I'm telling you, heaven opens all by itself just when he speaks in tongues. <laughs> but it's like Derek showing up in Atlanta, and Derek has a, a gun on him. All right, Derek has his gun or his licensed pistol, whatever. And Derek comes out of his car. And, and he's watching this shootout between the police officers and the gang. And for some odd reason, Derek feels it upon himself to take his gun out and start shooting after the gang members. Watch this. I need you to catch this. Derek shoots and hits one of the gang members. Hear me. Derek, would you do something like that? Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> Watch this. Although Derek did the will of the government, because he didn't have the backing of the institution. Y'all catch this tomorrow. When it's all said and done, the criminals are not the only ones being arrested. When they arrest Young Thug, they're going to arrest Derek too. Because although he did the will of the government, he did it without backing. 
But God says uh, this year, 2024, I am giving my people open heavens. And this year, you are going to receive the full backing of the government of heaven. Somebody shout, I got backing. Pray in the spirit with me quickly. Tony, I, I feel something so strong. Thank you, Jesus' name. Genesis 1, quickly. I told you I was teaching. I'm past 7.30. Give me another five minutes. LOL. Go to Genesis 1 quickly. I'm going to show you something. It was God's original intention for us to walk underneath open heavens. I want you to say that. Say it was God's original intention for us to walk under. Say under again. An open heaven. Uh, can you bring up Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27? I want you to read this with me. Three, two, one. Then God said, let, according, pause. I want you all to start over, but read it with some power. One, two, three. Say, then God said, let, likeness, let them have dominion. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Somebody say image. That word image in the original text, it means representation. Stay there. Image means representation. In other words, where I am not, you then become that in my presence. So God said, let us make man to represent us on the earth. In other words, we are like gods on the earth. <laughs> Can I teach this? We are like gods on the earth. Little G's. Somebody say, I am a god on the earth. I know that sounds interesting. Because we have a lot of new age people that's trying to teach that. But they're teaching it the perverted way. I'm giving you the Bible. They are my ambassadors. In other words, when I'm not there, I am because they're there. Okay. The word likeness now. Then God said, let us make man. I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to change the word to representation because that's what it means. So then God said, let us make man as our representation according to our, what does that word say? That word likeness in the Hebrew, Pastor Tay, means model. It means model. Somebody shout model. Somebody shout model again. So in other words, what God is saying, he says, let us make man as our representation according to our model. Whenever you're walking underneath someone's model, you are walking underneath their jurisdiction. When you are walking underneath someone's branding, you are walking underneath the same benefits that's given to the ones walking in the higher dimension God himself. God, you're not getting this. It's okay. Let me break it down this way. There's a, uh, a Nova Hub that's in Virginia. Do y'all know that church? Apostle Jordan Rice. He is underneath the model of ATL Hub. So what that means is, if anything ever happened at the Nova Hub, he would receive the backing of ATL Hub because he's underneath the brand or the model. Here's my point. It was God's original intention for Adam and Eve to walk under an open heaven because the model of God is heaven. The model of God is literally heaven, heaven. So watch this. The Bible says that God said, let there be. And there was, correct? So that means if God was able to do that, this means that I'm supposed to do the same thing. Hello? Go to Genesis 2. 
Genesis 2, verse 19. If God said, let there be, and there was, he spoke those things that were not as if they were. If God did it, that means I can too. Watch this. So Adam, I'm going to read it to you for the sake of time. It says, now the Lord God formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each, whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man uh, gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. The Bible says, is the scripture coming up? Genesis chapter 2, 19 through 20. It's okay. The Bible says, it says, and whatever the man called each. Somebody say whatever he called them. In other words, God brought the donkey to Adam. And Adam says, this is a donkey. And God says, sure. God brought the bird to Adam. And Adam says, it's a bird. So God said, sure. God brought the ant before Adam and Adam said it's an ant. God said sure. Why? Because there's a realm in the spirit that you get to where it's not about it's not about it's not about you trusting God. It's about God trusting you. Let me say that again. There's a realm in the dimensions of the spirit with God where it's not about you trusting God. It's about God trusting. Can I trust this man? Can I trust this woman? God only trusts his vessels that have spent time with him in intimate ascended prayer. I'm trying to get you to understand that it's not about how well you can preach. It's not about how well you can prophesy. It's not about how well you can speak. It's not about how good looking you are. It's not about how much money you have. But it's about does this man pray? Does this woman pray? Do they have history with God? Somebody shall glory. Jesus. Hey, oh, shut.
God is not looking for gifted. He's looking for presents. So would somebody open up your mouth and give it to You're watching online. God just interrupted our whole service. The same presence in this room I pray with. We're going higher. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. We're about to go even higher. I'm about to show you what's happening because I want to grab as much of you as I can. Some of you don't actually understand what's taking place in the realms of the spirit. This is called high altitude prayer. High altitude prayers. I feel us. The glory is about to overtake us. But I want you to understand context of where we're going. Stay right there. Stay right there. Hold on. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. It says Peter went on top of his roof. The Bible says Peter began to pray. The Bible says, as he prayed, the heavens opened. Here's a secret in the spirit. If you want the heavens to open over your life, it's not just prayer that's going to do it. It's ascended prayer. Jesus. Peter going to his rooftop was symbolic to the place he was in the spirit realm. He said, God, if I can just go a little higher. Revelations 1, John the Beloved, the voice called out to him and said, come up a little higher and I will show you things. That was an open heaven over John. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 17, that the woman at Zarephath, her son dies. And the Bible says that Elijah takes her son and he brings her son to the upper room. Santa Kataya. I need you to get this revelation. It's not just prayer that's going to get you there, but it's focused prayer. God. Listen, going higher in the natural was symbolic to these men of God ridding themselves of the distractions ridding themselves of the issues of men ridding themselves of everything happening around them so peter said if i can just go to the rooftop your bible says that someone was cooking food in the kitchen the bible says peter was hungry but then the bible never says peter left the roof to go get food the bible says he continued in prayer he died to himself he died to his flesh and he went up a little higher Somebody say ascended prayer. Ascended prayer. We're going there tonight. I believe we just hit one pocket. I'm prophesying that that was the first level. There's an shakarandabasa. There's another place that we're about to hit in the spirit realm. At Acts, Daniel chapter seven. The Bible says that the heavens open over Daniel. But do you know what he was doing in Daniel chapter 6? He was praying. But guess where he was praying? He was praying, the Bible says, in the upper room of his house. 
you can't create a doctrine off of one scripture, but you can when you find the, the similarities and the integrity of the rest of scripture. All of these great men, they understood the, the principle of going high. I'm not talking about physically climbing upon the roof. I'm talking about in the realms of the spirit ascending to a place with God where it's just you and him. Somebody shout, just me and you, God. Just me and you, God. There's a reason why in Acts chapter 1, Jesus told his disciples, go and wait for the Holy Ghost. And he didn't tell them to go to the room. He told them to go to the upper room. Because it's in the upper room. It's in the ascended place that the heavens open up. Lift your hands quickly. The Lord said that tonight your life will never be the same ever again. You cannot and you will not enter back into the stale places of your prayer life after these last three weeks. If you've been here the last two weeks, we hit pockets of intercession. And the Lord said, we're going back again tonight. And indeed, here we are. The Lord says for the next 15 minutes, I'm giving my people an opportunity to enter into what he calls the ascension prayer. It's a prayer where I forget about where I am. It's a prayer where I choose to go higher. I choose to go to the higher place. I choose to go to the higher room. I choose to go to the upper room. I choose to go to the high place with God. For he that dwells in the secret place of the most high, of the most high. Somebody shout the most high. So we're about to pray. Everybody on your feet. Our first prayer point is going to be prayers of repentance for our lack of prayer. Hear me. I know that we've been giving the word of the Lord concerning open doors. But I can, can I give you another prophetic word? Repent. We hate that word. Can I say it one more time? Saying it in love. I'm going to say it one more time. You ready? Somebody shout, repent. Repent. 